Several public bus drivers and conductors in Quezon City go through mandatory drug testing by the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency. Airport authorities brace for the long holiday. The Philippine Coast Guard warns passengers against colorum vessels. And the Philippine National Police goes on heightened alert status with over 90,000 personnel deployed across our country. Good evening. Malacanang confirms that President Rodrigo Duterte has already signed into law the 3.757 trillion peso 2019 General Appropriations Bill today, April 15. Executive Secretary Salvador Medialdea, through a text message sent to reporters, also said that the chief executive vetoed the 95.3 billion pesos worth of programs and projects or line items under the Department of Public Works and Highways, which are not part of the president's priority projects. No ceremonial signing of the budget was held, though the palace had initially scheduled it for today. Provincial bus drivers and conductors undergo mandatory drug tests today. Meanwhile, bus trips at the Araneta Center bus terminal are fully booked for the long holiday. My Bermudez tells us why. This is not an ordinary Monday for drivers and conductors at the Araneta Center bus station. The Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, or PIDEA, conducted a surprise mandatory drug test today for the drivers and conductors to ensure passenger safety. Fernando Laguiles, who has been in this field for more than two decades, agrees to the conduct of the test. It's so good to check the driver. Because the other drivers are the ones who are... Any driver who is screened positive will not be allowed to continue driving until we confirm the result and if they're confirmed negative then they can proceed. Otherwise, any driver who is confirmed positive for drug use will be subjected to initially um, intervention dito through on-site counseling. At yung licensia po nila, in coordination with the LTO, hindi natin i-release until makuha po nila yung proper certification from the DOH and from PIDEA proving that they have undergone the appropriate intervention for drug use. The Land Transportation Office or LTO also inspected buses before embarking on their trips to ensure that vehicles are under proper condition. Driver's license and registrations were also checked. Meanwhile, Lori Neil Prado and her family started their journey today for their one-month vacation on Tikau Island, Masbate. This will be the only chance for them to visit their hometown. Excited. Four years, hindi na kauwe eh. Norma Almoraje, on the other hand, complained to UNTV News and Rescue Team on long waiting hours she endured just for this trip to Bicol. Nahirapan na po, nagugutom pa, tao. Ang hirap na mala, malayang pinanggaling ang galing pa po sa Pangasinan po. Sana pabilis na na ang biyahe ko sana. Trips bound for provinces are fully booked for the approaching long holiday. Matumal po ma'am, hindi pa po ganong mapasahero. As of yesterday, nasa 7,000 plus kami. No? Mm -hmm. Almost 8,770 to combine both ng bus port at itong bus station. Mm -hmm. So we'll be expecting uh, to range between 8 to 9,000 passengers. Tight security is being implemented inside and outside the terminal where firearms, sharp objects, and flammable materials are prohibited. Authorities advise passengers to avoid bringing expensive jewelry or gadgets, which are usually the main target of criminals. Be alert at all times and always monitor your children and valuable belongings. Oh, okay. na hindi rin mahirap sa pagkarga sa mga bus mm -hmm. dahil uh, karamihan, pagka, especially going to the Visayas, talagang tawag nila lipat bahay. The passenger influx is expected to peak by Wednesday, the day on which the work week is expected to end. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority has suspended the number coding scheme from April 17 to 22 in observance of the Lenten season, 
According to MMDA EDSA Traffic Chief Bong Nebriha, the number coding scheme was suspended in the set dates in anticipation of the surge of travelers for this season, which is expected to begin on April 17. MMDA will also remain on alert on April 22 when passengers travel back to Metro Manila from their respective provinces. The Bureau of Immigration is advising passengers traveling abroad to come in Ninoy Aquino International Airport or NAIA three hours ahead of their flight schedule. Joanano explains why. To avoid missing their flights and any possible delays, passengers bound abroad are advised to arrive in Ninoy Aquino International Airport or NAIA ahead of their flight schedule. Bureau of Immigration Port Operations Chief Grifton Medina told passengers that it is better to be in the airport three hours ahead of their flight schedule so the immigration will have an ample time for the processing and documentation of passengers taking international flights. Despite of having adequate personnel, Grifton reiterates that long queues in immigration booths is still inevitable since they are expecting the influx of passengers this long holiday. Gusto po sana namin mas maging uh, alerto at maaga sila sa pag-check-in at sana po pag nag-check-in na sila ay uh, sana po tumuloy na sila sa kanilang mga immigration areas or immigration counters para po uh, kung magkaroon man ng lalabas muna sila, kakain muna, uh, gusto mag-goodbye muna sa mga pamilya para po dumating yung hindi po yung mag-ipon-ipon, nagkakasabay-sabay. The BI has deployed an additional 57 immigration officers from other divisions on top of 70 existing officers assigned in NAIA. Meanwhile, at around 3 p.m. earlier, passengers taking their domestic and international flights started to influx in NAIA Terminal 1 and 3, resulting to long queues in airlines' check-in counters. Manila International Airport Authority General Manager Eddie Monreal says that they are expecting the full blast of airport passengers on Wednesday. Based on MIAA's record, almost 900,000 passengers has been accommodated in IA since April 8 to April 14. The MIAA has started to implement stricter security measures in IA wherein all baggages has to be screened in IA's X-ray machines to assure that prohibited items will not be infiltrated inside the airport. Bringing in of any pointed objects and deadly weapons are strictly prohibited as well as any liquid items that is more than 100 ml. Two-minute waiting time policy for loading and unloading of passengers is strictly enforced so as to avoid the buildup of traffic in the airport's arrival and departure area. On the other hand, several passengers opted to arrive in the airport more hours ahead of their flight schedule so as to avoid any delays. Because it's so, uh, it's so um, traffic on the road, so many travelers, so uh, it's, makes, it's better to come here earlier. Ayun, para nga po maiwasan yung ma traffic or baka madelay sa flight, maiwan ang aeroplano. So, iwas sa bala para nun dito komodo na nun. Hindi yung naga, nagahabol. John Nano UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. The Philippine Coast Guard calls on the public to report Colorum Sea vessels as the long holiday approaches. April Senedosa tells us why. Don't patronize Colorum or unregistered ships and boats. The Philippine Coast Guard or PCG issued this warning on Monday amid the surge of passengers at different ports in the country. The PCG admitted they find it hard to monitor these Colorum sea vessels. With this, they call on the public for cooperation by reporting ships or boats that operate and offer transportation illegally. May malaking role dito ang publiko. Na wag nang sumakay, wag tangkilikin. Walang mga life jacket siyan, kadalasan. Walang mga floating equipment. Pag kami nangyari, hindi kagad namin malalaman kasi hindi namin naman monitor. Captain Balilo explained that it is risky to go on board illegal sea vessels as passengers will not receive any benefits when accidents happen involving Colorum ships or boats. The PCG has been on heightened alert status since April 8 to secure port passengers. According to the official, they expect the number of passengers to increase beginning Wednesday. The PCG is continuously monitoring some of the popular tourist destinations in the country, such as Palawan, Boracay Island, Bohol, and Cebu. 
The PCG spokesperson also gave tips to passengers who are about to travel during the long holiday. Una, planuhin yung paglalakbay. Pangalawa, huwag nang dalin yung mga dapat na hindi dalin. Mga likido na maaaring sanhi ng pagsabog, mga hazardous material. Ayun nga, yung chemicals na yun, nagiging uh, mitya ng sunog yung mga matatalas na bagay. Moreover, Captain Balilo also reminds sport passengers to coordinate with the authorities, especially when on board a sea vessel. Listen to and follow the advisories of shipping companies. Take care of children. Know the use of life jackets. Passengers must not let their baggage get scattered on exit points. Meanwhile, there have been no stranded passengers, but only delays on various trips, according to the PCJ. April Senedoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Philippine National Police, or PNP, remains on heightened alert as the long holiday approaches. Victor Cosare tells us what. Philippine National Police or PNP Chief Police General Oscar Albayalde reported today they have not monitored any threats on public security this approaching long holiday. The PNP Chief said they have also deployed over 91,000 cops nationwide to maintain public security and safety. We have deployed 91,201 personnel in 17 regions for route security, target hardening and security operations in places of convergence and transportation hubs. However, the PNP will be on full alert status beginning Wednesday, April 17, particularly in crowded areas and tourist destinations. This is to prevent crime incidents, which are common during long holidays. The police also reported 23 incidents from April 8 to 15, 2019, with 15 deaths and 13 injuries. These include drowning, vehicular accidents, shooting incidents, physical injuries, robbery, and theft. General Albayale reiterated their illegal drug campaign continues. Uh, siguro mag, magpursigi pa tayo dahil nga uh, lately sinasabi nga ng ating Pangulo na parang nakikita niya parang lumala, lumalala pa yung uh, supply of uh, drugs dito sa ating bansa. So, hindi tayo pwedeng tumigil. It can be noted that President Rodrigo Duterte said in February that the country's problem on illegal drugs seems to have worsened as the number of drug users have risen from 3 million to 7 to 8 million. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. This holiday season, many are planning on leaving their houses to go on a vacation for several days. Here are some tips to protect yourself from the so-called Akyat Bahay Gang or house burglars from Monoxon. It's vacation time. Many of us are planning on taking advantage of this part of the year to relax. Depending on where you want to go, many will be surely leaving their house for some time. And burglars will surely take advantage of this to steal precious things from our homes. Here are some tips to protect ourselves and our homes from burglars. Always remember to lock the doors and windows of your house to make sure that no one from outside could enter. Leave some old slippers and shoes outside at your doorstep to make it look like there is someone inside the house. Talk to a trusted neighbor and ask them to look after your house until you come back from vacation. If possible, leave lights open outside, especially in the dark areas of your house. It's better to have a burglar alarm to alert neighbors if there is an intruder. If your budget allows, install a CCTV system with motion detector to record events in case of intrusion in your house. Having a dog in your house can also help because it can serve as an animal barrier. If you don't have a dog, you can put a beware of dog sign. Avoid leaving important things like gadgets beside windows. This can entice burglars to steal if they openly see gadgets from outside. Hide important things outside the house like clothes, bicycles, and other items of value. Be careful not to post on social media everything about your vacation plan. Avoid placing a note that no one is in the house. Remember the steps to enjoy your summer escapade without worrying about anything when you leave your home. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue.
The Star Wars Celebration 2019 not only gave Star Wars fans once-in-lifetime glimpses into the future of the epic saga, but also a fun-filled event that highlights Star Wars costumes. Mirasol Abugadil tells us why. The Star Wars convention is many things to many fans, but one favorite element for the most is to dress up as their favorite characters. During the celebration that ran from April 11 to 15, 2019, fans dressed up as heroes, villains, Jedis, Sith, bounty hunters, princesses, and more in the West Building at the McCormick Place in Chicago, Illinois in the USA. Some went off topic and combined other pop icons like Spider-Man and Mickey Mouse into their costumes, while others dressed up as Star Wars creator George Lucas. And some made the ultimate sin for Star Wars fans, dressing up as a Star Trek character. The celebration is days of major announcements, immersive exhibits, and an interactive show floor, celebrity guests, fan-inspired activities, and other surprises celebrating all things Star Wars. Families are brought together. Old friends are reunited. The Star Wars celebration was organized by Lucasfilm in cooperation with the Reed Pop Group. Meanwhile, toy company Lego has created an image of the helmet of the notorious Star Wars henchman, the Stormtrooper, made up entirely of their small Stormtrooper figurines. The image, which is 20 feet tall and 20 feet wide, is composed of 36,440 minifigures and it took 12 people 38 hours to create and install. The project won a place in the Guinness World Records for being the largest display of LEGO Star Wars minifigures ever. The previous record was held at 35,210 minifigures. Mirasol Abogadil, UNTV News and Rescue. High temperatures are continuously felt in different parts of the Philippines. But is it possible for the Philippines to experience a heat wave? Ray Palayo has this report. Pag-asa recorded the highest temperature in Isabela last April 10 with 38.7 degrees Celsius. On the other hand, the highest heat index was recorded in Dagupan City in Pangasinan last April 9 that reached 51.7 degrees Celsius. But despite these soaring high temperatures, the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration or Pagasa said that there is a slim chance of experiencing a heat wave in the country. Pagasa argues that the geographical location of the Philippines is different from places where heat wave is frequently experienced like America and Australia. The World Meteorological Organization defines heat wave as the prolonged heat with at least 5 degrees Celsius above maximum temperatures in an area with 5 consecutive days or more. It may cause hundreds or even thousand deaths. But in the Philippines, since we're surrounded by the tubig, there's a chance that we'll have a heat wave or that we'll have a lot of heat that we'll have a maximum temperature, not the heat index. Pag-asa reiterate that they are only responsible with the data or reports officially released by the agency. They remind the public to be meticulous of weather reports coming from other sources. Last April 12, some expressed their concern on a post of the Philippine Weather Foundation in their social media account to a seemingly high heat index in Dumarao, Capiz, which according to the post, reached 65.1 degrees Celsius. Pag-asa's response to this is... In terms of maximum temperature naman, dun sa may area na yun, sa malapit sa Kapi, sa pinakamalapit is Roja City at nakapagtala tayo dun ng 32 degrees Celsius lamang na maximum temperature at yung heat index niya equivalent is 40 degrees Celsius. So napakalayo dun sa 65 degrees na sinasabi nilang record breaking. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Meanwhile, some customers of Mainilad Water Services Incorporated or Mainilad will have no water for 5 to 30 hours during the long holiday as the company conducts several maintenance activities. In a statement, Mainilad said it will conduct several water network enhancement activities, including facility maintenance works, pipe decommissioning, 
pipe interconnections and valve replacements from April 16, 2019 to April 20, 2019. Some of the areas that will be affected by the scheduled water interruption are Bacoor Cavite, Las Piñas, Malabon, Manila, Navotas, Quezon City, Paranaque, Pasay, and Valenzuela. Maynila encourages affected customers to store water at least three days before the scheduled interruption. The company has 40 water tankers on standby ready to deliver water to affected areas as needed. Meanwhile, Malacanang ensures the public the government is on top of the situation over impending water and power interruptions due to El Nino. This is the response of the palace when asked about the pending crisis the public may experience because of the extreme weather condition. Today, the Luzon is placed under red alert status before because of thin power supply. I was just talking to Secretary Al. We're on top of it. With less than a month before the day of the midterm elections, senatorial candidates continue to campaign in different parts of the country. Marisol Montaño will tell us why. Pagbabago senatorial candidates campaign in Mati City, Davao today, led by their chairperson, Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio. Present in the campaign sortie were Senators Cynthia Villar, Sunny Angara, and J.V. Ejercito. Senatorial candidates Ronald Bato de la Rosa, Francis Torrentino, Jinko Estrada, Aimee Marcos, Congressman Dong Manguda Datu, and Congresswoman Pia Cayetano. Uh, itutuloy ko yung aking mga livelihood project, lalong-lalo na sa agriculture. Mas marami akong model ng livelihood project for agriculture. And then, uh, yun naman ang kailangan ng mga tao para may hanap buhay sila, para gumanda ang buhay nila. During the hugpong ng pagbabago sortie, the presidential daughter denied reports that she plans to run for presidency. Wala din naman na sa aking mga plans yun. Ang plans ko lang talaga is uh, to finish three terms as mayor of Davao City. Wala, wala, wala siyang ano, wala siyang personal na sinabi sa akin about uh, the presidency. Kapag nagkakasama kasi kami, hindi kami nag-uusap ng politics or work. Eh. We usually talk about issues in the family. On the other hand, also the retro senatorial candidates conducted campaigns today separately. Child Jokno went to Butuan. Senator Bama Kino campaigned in Aklan and Mar Rojas went to Tarlac. Gary Alejano, Samira Gotok, and Erin Tanyada conducted a press conference in Metro Manila today. Nagpapasalamat namin ngayon pa lang sa efforts o sa sakripisyo ng aming mga volunteers. Uh, marami sa kanila hindi pa namin na-meet. Meanwhile, independent candidate Senator Grace Po campaigned in Camarines Sur today while Lito Lapid was in Sarangani over the weekend. Marcel Montano, UNTV News and Rescue, Davao Occidental. Filipino voters abroad experienced several issues on day one of the overseas absentee voting. Grace Kassin will tell us why. In Hong Kong, there were glitches in two vote counting machines or VCMs on the first day of overseas absentee voting. The VCMs could not do its function of reading the ballots, while others rejecting the entry of some. The problematic machines were then replaced. According to Consul General Antonio Morales, there were also issues of improper shading of ballots, overvoting, and the barcodes of several ballots. There were over 90,000 registered voters in Hong Kong. One of them is Jezeli Mendoza, who said the voting process now is easier despite the glitches. Second time ko po kasi ngayon, first time kung nag naging first voter noong 2016 national elections. So this year, medyo mas madali na kasi nakapag-first vote na ako noong 2016. In Russia, the Philippine Embassy Facebook page was flooded with complaints as the number of ballots that arrived was far lower than the number of registered voters. Only 2,169 ballots arrived while the number of registered voters are 3,529. The UNTV News team still awaits the response of the Philippine Embassy in Russia. 
In Malaysia, only few voters came on the first day of overseas absentee voting. There were 18,300 registered Filipino voters in Malaysia, but less than 1% came to vote. Ambassador Charles Jose led the voting and demonstrated to the voters the proper way of casting votes. The Philippine Embassy in Malaysia hopes for a larger voter turnout on May 13. In Taiwan, the Manila Economic Cultural Office or MECO calls on registered voters to not wait for the last day of voting. There are 41,000 registered voters in Taiwan. Magkakasabay-sabay po kayo ngayong palampung araw na ito at araw-araw hanggang Mayo at 13, bukas po ang MECO para tanggapin ang inyong boto. Uh, gamitin po natin ang karapatan natin na mamili kung sino ang mamumuno sa atin. In East Timor, there are 1,200 Filipinos based on records, but only 756 registered voters came to vote on the first day of OAV. Consul Jason Anasaria said they will intensify the information campaign to encourage other Filipinos to vote. So, on the average, usually, ang mga bumaboto sa overseas voting nasa 20 to 30 percent. Ah, probably ma 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 makatanggap din tayo ng mas mataas pa dun siguro, based on nakikita ko. Uh, makaka-improve tayo ng konti doon sa rate of turnout ng voters dito sa Timor-Leste. In New Zealand, this is the first time Filipino voters in the country have used vote counting machines. There are over 19,000 registered voters there, but only a few came on the first day of overseas voting. In Dubai, the voting hours are from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. except on April 18 and 19 when the election precincts are closed this is to accommodate Filipinos who will come to vote after work. But the Philippine Embassy in Dubai noticed a lower number of voters on the first day of voting this year than that in the 2016 presidential election. Since open pa naman kami hanggang gabi, sana pumunta sila at uh, mag-cast ng mga votes nila. Pero dahil uh, midterm elections ito at statistically mas marami talaga ang bumuboto sa presidential elections natin, and in Singapore, despite the systematic process on the day one of the overseas absentee voting, many Filipinos were not able to vote due to many reasons. Some of them were not able to present an ID, so they were not allowed to cast their votes. Some got confused in the process of postal voting, so they just opt to go to the Philippine Embassy to vote. Uh, kasi nag, uh, nag google ako by email kasi nga yung employer ko pabago-bago ng isip. Uh, parang ayaw niya akong payagan na mag-day off, ganyan, or lumabas. So sabi niya, okay ngayon, uh, pwede ka nang lumabas at mag-vote. Tapos pumunta ako rito sa embassy, so sabi na isend na raw yung voting papers ko sa bahay. So antayin ko na lang daw yung voting papers sa bahay. Bali, postal voting po kayo ngayon? Mm -mm -mm. Tapos isend-send ko na lang by the post office. Registered voters in USA, Canada, and the most countries in Europe may cast their votes through postal voting, which is also open until May 13th. Grace Cass in UNTV News and Rescue. Many taxpayers rush today at the Bureau of Internal Revenue offices to file their income tax return. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. Over the weekend, some taxpayers take the opportunity to file their income tax return. This Saturday's schedule is the additional schedule given by the BIR before the deadline of the ITR filing this day, April 15. According to taxpayers, they have not experienced any hassle and the transactions are fast, especially there are small numbers of filers that day in the Revenue District 42 of the San Juan City. Mas maganda pong nagbigay sila ng Sabado kasi sa Lourdes last day para hindi na maka-istorbo pa ng ibang tao, nakapagpaila sila ngayon ng Sabado. Kaya pasalamat po, may piling na ng Sabado ang BIR. Mas okay dahil walang tao. Well, sa ngayon, siguro medyo okay dahil sa last year madami. Dahil Saturday, baka... <laughs> Today, as expected, many are rushed in revenue offices to meet the deadline. In Revenue District 39 and 40, taxpayers are in long queue. It is now easy for taxpayers to file their ITR. They may go online to pay for their taxes. They don't need to go in the revenue office if they don't have any additional documents to submit. Ah, wala. Ah, sa history ng BIR, ano, wala pang naging extension except uh, ata, kung halimbawa, bagyo. 
o kaya mayroong mga natural calamities na mangyayari, sigurado ko, uh, baka may extend. Pero sa uh, tanda ko sa BIR, wala pa akong, uh, uh, wala pang nangyari na na-extend po yung deadline. Kasi ito po ay mandated by law. Na ang deadline is uh, April 15 every year. The BIR set a strict deadline for filing 2018 income tax returns on today, April 15. Failure to do so will mean penalties. Those who will not be able to file on Monday will have to pay a 25% surcharge of the amount due, a 12% delinquency interest per annum, as well as compromise penalties. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. In other news, Malacanang stands firm that the Duterte administration has been reiterating the arbitral ruling on its territorial dispute with China in the West Philippine Sea. Rosa de Coz will tell us why. The palace denies reports that the Duterte administration has shelved the arbitral ruling favoring the Philippines over China on the territorial dispute in the West Philippine Sea. When President Rodrigo Duterte made a statement saying he will have to decide with stronger actions if ever there will be Filipinos who will get hurt or endangered because of the presence of Chinese vessels near the Philippine territories, this is a reiteration of the ruling of the UN Tribunal. The ruling of the arbitral tribunal under the United Nations on the law of the sea in The Hague favored the Philippines on the case it filed against China in 2013. Effectively, having... his previous statement earlier when he said do not touch our property if you do any harm to our soldiers, we will respond in kind. <laughs> that, that effectively has already made a very strong assertion of sovereignty and statement is that also are we also supposed relative to, to the arbitral ruling exactly presidential spokesperson panelo also said our country can invoke the arbitral ruling on china anytime and even china does not believe in it it has to respect the ruling so we feel that we have a judgment a judgment with which has a stamp of permanence it cannot be taken away from us and therefore they should respect it although they do not believe in it. The Duterte administration still awaits the response of China to the diplomatic protest submitted to China in relation to the presence of Chinese vessels near Pag-asa Island. Last week, China stood firm that the Spratly Islands are theirs and that they have sufficient historical and legal basis for the claim. According to Malacanang, the issues concerning the territorial dispute on the West Philippine Sea can be discussed during President Duterte's visit to China again to attend the Belt and Road Initiative Forum. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. President Rodrigo Duterte's administration is still open to have talks with the leftist group with another way and through new people. Mirasol Abogadil will tell us why. After the termination of the appointment of the government peace panel members, as well as of the formal peace talks with the leftist group, President Rodrigo Duterte yet again mentioned the issue on conducting negotiations with the rebel communist group. The president said if the rebel communists wanted to have talks with his administration, his administration would be willing to form a panel that will be composed of three to five members, mostly military officials. I said, I'm going to ask you a story. 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 I'm going to ask you a peace panel. I'm going to ask you a story. It's okay. Three years. I'm going to ask you a story. I'm going to ask you a story. Bagong pagi, bagong tao magig historia. Basig nga doha usa o tulo anak militar. Unya ang mga lima. Doha kasi bilyan o tulo ka militar. According to Malacanang, this only shows that President Duterte is still open to have peace talks with the leftist group. Meanwhile, the chief executive revealed the possibility that Jordan will donate another helicopter to the Philippines. This aside from two Cobra attack helicopters to be delivered to Manila in July this year as a result of President Duterte's visit to Jordan in 2018. President Duterte, however, emphasized he does not want to use the helicopters in attacking fellow Filipinos. At ko sa Jordan dito sa desert, Gipatan ako sa helicopter ng ilang 
ihatag ang i-exhibition nga ito tagaan ta nilag no amigo mami ni king sa jordan eh, siya ka basi himuon niya ang tulo kana ang mga helicopter di na ako na gustong gamiton sa mga NPA kay Pilipino rata masakitan kung mamatay magtanaw sundalo o NPA Pilipino eh gusto mo mangita lang taglaing kalaban ayaw lang kita Mirasol Abugadil, UNTV, News and Rescue. The reigning world champions of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series continue where they left off last season. Vincent Arboleda tells us why. Gary Hunt and Rhiannon Ifland won at the opening stop of the 2019 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series held at the Small Lagoon in El Nido on Saturday. Seven-time champion Gary Hunt of Great Britain took the men's honors with his final dive from 27 meters high in stunning scenery, leaving Romania's Konstantin Popovici into second place with Jonathan Paredes of Mexico finishing in third. That's the word you can use, relief. In a competition like that, when you sense there's big marks being thrown, it's, um, it's just so tense not wanting to make a mistake and uh, it feels great to have um, pulled through with a, a consistent list of dives. Three-time champion Rhiannon Ifland topped the podium in the women's event. The Australian also nailed her final dive to continue her winning run from the 21-meter board. Super happy, you know. I'm a bit surprised as well. Um, I was standing up there and I, I thought it was a little bit out of my reach. Um, but. You know, I, I do like that little bit of extra pressure. I think it, it definitely helps me um, when I'm out on the platform, but I just try to stay calm and collected and, and enjoy what I do. So, yeah, I'm super stoked. It's <laughs> kind of out of words, really. Belarusian Yananets Cherava came second, while his son Richard of Canada finished in third. From here, they move on to chillier waters in Dublin, Ireland for the second new stop on the calendar in a month's time. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue. And to finally complete the most significant news for the day, why news continues, here are the top stories. In a press conference today, PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde reported that over 90,000 police personnel have been deployed nationwide for route security, target hardening and security operations. This is to ensure the peace and order and security of the public, particularly in places of convergence such as churches, malls, vacation destinations and transportation hubs, the PNP chief said. He also reiterated that the police are on heightened alert as of today, but will still be on full alert status beginning Wednesday, April 17. Albayalde said they have yet to monitor possible threats this time of the year, particularly amid the approaching long holiday. Meanwhile, the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration or PAGASA said there is a slim chance of experiencing a heat wave in the country. This comes after Weather Philippines Foundation, which according to its Facebook page is a non-profit organization that provides free, accurate and localized weather information posted on social media last April 11. The hottest heat index in Dumarao Capis with 65.1 degrees Celsius at 2.30 p.m. in the afternoon. The Weather Philippines Foundation's post on Facebook has also garnered a number of comments from netizens who say the report is impossible while some got confused. Weather Philippines Foundation argues in response to a netizen that the heat index is a combination of temperature and humidity on what it feels like and that the temperature in Dumara was at 40.6 degrees Celsius, but the relative humidity or the actual weather vapor in the atmosphere was at 60%. On the other hand, Pagasa explained this report is far from the actual heat index of only 40 degrees Celsius. In terms of maximum temperature naman, dun sa may area na yun, sa malapit sa Capiz, ang pinakamalapit is Roja City at nakapagtala tayo dun ng 32 degrees Celsius lamang na maximum temperature at yung heat index na equivalent is 40 degrees Celsius. So napakalayo dun sa 65 degrees na sinasabi nilang record breaking. 
President Rodrigo Duterte's statement on the presence of Chinese vessels near Pagasa Island in the, Philippi in the West Philippine Sea counts as invoking the 2016 arbitral ruling on the disputed waterway according to Malacanang. The palace insisted that the Duterte administration never shelved the arbitral award that invalidated China's historic claims over the South China Sea, part of which is the West Philippine Sea. Presidential spokesperson Panelo also said, our country can invoke the arbitral ruling on China anytime. And even China does not believe in it that it has to, res that it has to respect the ruling. So we feel that we have a judgment, a judgment with, which has a stamp of permanence. It cannot be taken away from us. And therefore they should respect it, although they do not believe in it. And for the news abroad, three people have died in a plane crash in Nepal at what is regarded as one of the world's most dangerous airports. The plane veered off the runway and hit a stationary helicopter at Lukla Airport, the main gateway to the Everest region. The runway is short and surrounded by mountains, making it extremely difficult for takeoff and landing. The pilot of the plane and two police officers standing near the helicopter died. Three other people were injured. Both aircraft belong to the companies involved in taking climbers, tourists, and locals to the Everest region. The reason for Saturday's accident is not clear. Officials said the weather was good and flights later resumed their operations. Meanwhile, the largest ever-built carrier flies from the Mojave Airport and back the first time this weekend. Mon Hock Song will tell us why. The world's largest aircraft took off over the Mojave Desert in California on Saturday flight for the carbon composite plane built by Strato Launch Systems Corporation. Started by late Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen as the company enters the lucrative private space market. The white airplane features twin fuselages and six jet engines and has a wingspan of 385 feet, long enough to cross an American football field from end zone to end zone. That's about the same length as the International Space Station. The plane is designed to drop rockets and other space vehicles weighing up to 500,000 pounds at an altitude of 35,000 feet and has been billed by the company as making satellite deployment as easy as booking an airline flight. It took to the air shortly before 7 a.m. Pacific time and stayed aloft for more than two hours before landing safely back at the Mojave Air and Space Port. Saturday's flight, which saw the plane reach a maximum speed of 189 miles per hour and altitudes of 17,000 feet, was meant to test its performance and handling qualities, according to Strato Launch. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue. Finland's leftist Social Democrat Party or SDP leader Antti Rinne declared victory in Sunday's general election after results showed his party winning by a tight margin. The Social Democrats and the Nationalist Finns party appeared tied with the nearly all votes counted, reflecting a mounting sense of insecurity in the Nordic nation over immigration and welfare. With a fragmented parliament and deep divisions within the mainstream parties over how to tackle rising costs of expensive public services, coalition talks following the vote could be protracted. But Social Democrat leader Antti Rinne, 56, a former union boss, was expected to have the first shot at forming a government, with most party leaders having ruled out cooperation with the Finns. And for the second time, Facebook and Instagram are down in unexplained worldwide outage. Meanwhile, the Red Cross is seeking information about three staff members abducted in Syria five and a half years ago. Here's Mirasol Abogadil to tell us why. In Switzerland. The Red Cross is seeking information about three staff members abducted in Syria five and a half years ago. In its first detailed statement on the incident, it says Luis Akavi, Ala Arahab, and Nabil Bakdunes were seized in October 2013 while traveling to Idlib province in northwestern Syria. Akavi was held by the Islamic State group and there is evidence she was alive 
in late 2018, the Red Cross says. The fate of Rahab and Bakdunes is not known. Akavi, a citizen of New Zealand, is a 62-year-old nurse who has carried out 17 field missions. Ala Arahab and Nabil Bakdunes, both Syrian nationals, worked as drivers who delivered humanitarian assistance in the country. New Zealand says that a special forces team has been trying to locate Akavi. In USA, Facebook incorporated social networking site, photo sharing social network Instagram, and messaging app WhatsApp were inaccessible to some users on Sunday, downdetector.com, which monitors outages, showed. Downdetector.com indicated that there were more than 12,000 incidents of people reporting issues with Facebook at its peak, but that figure dropped to about 2,000 reports. Facebook experienced one of its longest outages in March when some users around the globe faced trouble accessing Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp for more than 24 hours. Downdetector.com's live outage map showed that the issues were mainly in Europe and Asia. Meanwhile, U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission said on Friday that toy maker Fisher Price has voluntarily recalled all its rock and play sleeper products after reports of more than 30 infant deaths. The regulator said consumers should immediately stop using the product and contact Fisher Price for a refund or voucher. Mirasol Abugadil, UNTV News and Rescue. Tiger Woods wins his fifth green jacket at the Masters 2019. Meanwhile, Belgian cyclist Philippe Gilbert claims his fourth monument classic. Verdi Petaglio will tell us why. Tiger Woods ends an 11-year major title drought as he completed one of sports' great all-time comebacks and claimed his 15th major title that many thought would never come. A greedy 2-under-70 clinched the 43-year-old world number 12, a one-shot victory over Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka, and Shander Shuffle. Not since the 2008 U.S. Open had Woods hoisted a major trophy, while the last of his four Augusta titles came in 2005. His fifth green jacket, leaving him one short of a Jack Nicklaus record. Tiger still fits into the jacket that he won when he was 21. And in cycling, Belgian Philippe Gilbert added to his impressive hole when he claimed his Ford Monument Classic by mastering the cobbles to win the Paris Rubai on Sunday. The former world champion beat German Nils Polit Katusha in a sprint finish on the Rubai Velodorm with his teammate and compatriot Yves Lampert coming home third. The Milan San Remo, in which he has twice finished third, is the only monument one day race he has not won. With much more experience than 25 year old Polit, Gilbert easily won the sprint to give his team their second monument title of the season after France Julian Alephilippe won Milan San Remo last month. For Di Petalio, UNTV News and Rescue. Southwest China's terraced field creates a fascinating scenery for tourists and at the same time serves as a golden farmland for farmers. Nina Armilio will tell us why. A vast terraced field that spirals from the foot of the Taigong Mountain up its undulating ridges in southwest China's Chongqing municipality formed a fascinating fairyland in spring. The Keisai Terraced Field covers 300 hectares and has 20 varieties of flowers and nursery-grown plants including azalea flowers, Chinese fringe flowers, and red robin trees. The terrace lies layer by layer. Every layer has a different color from others like a palette that we used in our childhood. It's colorful and gorgeous. For tourists, this plot of flower field is beautiful scenery, but for farmers, it is a golden farmland. The flowers and seedlings are often sold to Chongqing and neighboring Guizhou province for urban greening. We used to plant sweet potatoes, maize and rice, but now we are encouraged by the government to grow flowers. We can earn about 20,000 yuan each mu, several folds more than what we could in the past. 
as the most beautiful curves on the earth. Terraced fields are commonly used for farming on hilly or mountainous terrain, helping reduce both soil erosion and surface runoff. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news this April 15, 2019. And on behalf of Rina Villamor Camara, I am William Theo. And before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. Any driver who is confirmed positive for drug use will be subjected to initially um, intervention dito through on-site counseling. At yung licensia po nila, in coordination with the LTO, hindi natin i-release. May malaking role dito ang publiko na huwag nang sumakay, huwag tang kilikin. But in the Philippines, since surrounded tayo ng tubig, uh, mababa yung chance na magkaroon ng heat wave or yung tuloy-tuloy na sobrang init talaga na maximum temperature, hindi siya yung heat index. Tapos pumunta ko rito sa embassy, so sabi na isend na raw yung voting papers ko sa bahay. So, antayin ko na lang daw yung voting papers sa bahay. Tapos isend ko na lang by the post office. So, we feel that we have a judgment, a judgment with, which has a stamp of permanence. It cannot be taken away from us. And therefore, they should respect it, although they do not believe in it.